Hello everyone, this is part one of my video series where I'm converting a Volkswagen bus into an electric work van. For those of you who are new to my channel, let me recap this for you. In early 2020, I purchased a 1978 Volkswagen camper bus and I also sold my previous electric car conversion, the Spitfire. For the last year or more, I've been restoring the bus and filming those videos on a separate playlist that's on my channel. This video starts a new playlist specifically for the electric vehicle conversion. The topic for today is fabricating the electric accelerator pedal mount, so let's get started. Well, hey everybody, welcome to the one of the first few videos of the electric conversion of my 1978 Volkswagen bus. This will be one of the first on that playlist that's going to be going in parallel with the restoration playlist if you have been following along with that. These first few videos were doing some preliminary things as I'm still basically in the mode of, and as far as in the restoration of getting the car, you know, the bodywork done and ready for paint. A lot of that has to do with uh, rust remediation and so and metal work and so I'm starting to think of some preliminary things because I want to have these done before I do the rest of the body work and this one here that we're going to be talking about is on the accelerator pedal now this is the accelerator pedal that I'm using this is a Hall effect sensor accelerator pedal and it is a actually a Toyota part so I don't know if this went into a Prius or, or, or what, but this is uh, this pedal here with this wiring harness pairs with my net gain motor controller. In order to get this to work though, on a lot of cars, and I actually saw a Jeep conversion that used the same pedal, and all he did was just mount it to the firewall. Like, you know, this is the firewall and, you know, and just mounted it to that and done. Well, the problem is, is the Volkswagen doesn't really have a firewall. <laughs> it has, it, you know, basically the flooring, and then you have the nose up here. But I can't obviously mount this to the nose, otherwise I'd have bolts sticking out of the front of the car. So I've got to figure out a way to orient this, you know, with, you know, upright like this, so that the pedal looks right. So let's see how I did that. Well, I went out in my little attic, and I got down one of the uh, Vanagon seats that I'm going to be installing in the bus and I went ahead and slid it onto the rails here just so I could ha you know be in the seated position and figure out what would be best for this accelerator pedal. Now as a point of reference to the stock accelerator here I've got the the brake pedal installed just to see you know what it's going to look like and the way the stock pedal worked is there was a bracket that looked like this that had basically made it made a kind of a hinge here and then this thing the accelerator pedal here would hinge on it from there and you would actuate it about like that it would stay up about like there and then of course the throttle cable went through this hole right here when i get up into my seat here I mean, the Volkswagen buses also have just a very peculiar uh, seating where, and you're sort of sitting straddling the, you know, steering shaft. You've got your clutch on this side, you've got your brake on this side, and your accelerator is about right here. So, what I had to figure out is how can I make that throttle pedal that I have orient about the same or at least if not the same in a comfortable position uh, that's comparable to how the original worked. When I was at the store I happened to see these shelf brackets and they're just basically pieces of thick uh, 3 16 inch steel and I bought a couple of them there in the bargain bins for like a couple dollars each so I thought hey that's a good way to get some cheap steel and I took one of them and I cut a little piece off the end here, and then I pounded it into this, um, you know, just pounded it into a much more drastic angle there. And this is what I'm kind of looking at uh, testing out to see whether I can, how that would work as a throttle pedal bracket. Well, to get a test fit here, I tentatively mounted my 
accelerator pedal to this piece of the bracket I started making. I just I just bolted it onto the top and drilled a hole through and bolted it onto the top. So now I've got this piece here, and my idea was that I would weld or bolt this bracket to the floor here, and something like something like this. Let's see how that works. I think I like that. I think I... The angle was a little of a concern. I may have gone too far. I might want the angle a little bit up. Just a slight pitch up. So I'm going to go ahead and bend, actually bend it back up a little bit. And I think we'll, get, we'll, we'll have it the right angle. Okay, well, I've managed to take this shelf bracket and start turning it into this thing right here. And this is the first stage of our accelerator pedal bracket. So as you can see, I basically just took this guy, bent it in, uh, cut off a little bit of the end here, and grafted it in to the side here to make that little ear, as you can see. Here it's uh, just mounted on there. Really like the way it looks. One of the problems I have is when I actuate the pedal, it hits the floor. The bottom of the pedal hits the floor before it can get to a, a full range of motion. The easiest solution to that would be, well, okay, just you should have put gotten this on a longer bracket. The problem is, is the longer I make this, the pedal has to go up and back, and I don't really want it to go uh, back anymore. So what I thought I'd do initially was, well, I just need to add, I measured about maybe about a half an inch or a little bit more, five-eighths of an inch, uh, underneath here would, would allow more clearance uh, so that the pedal can get that full range of motion. So I thought, oh, well, you know, maybe I'll just take a thick piece of stock like this, about half-inch material, and just, you know, add it to the bottom. Well, the problem there is not only is this really, really heavy piece of steel, but also I have a 110 volt welder. It, you know, 3 sixteenths of this metal is about the, the top of its range. So that might be difficult to do. So what I thought I would do is I already knew with this extra piece of bracket that likely what I would do is use it, a piece of it like this to, uh, weld, you know, cut a piece off and weld a support between here and here to give it more rigidity. And I'm definitely going to do that, but then I thought, well, maybe what I could do also is use the rest of the metal here and say, say do something like this where I, you know, maybe like this, where I weld it onto there, but continue it down another half inch and then round it out and, and you know go to the bottom there. It's kind of hard to show you, but uh, basically what I'm going to do is come down, come a little bit further than half inch, and weld on another uh, area here, and that will allow me not only to, well, I, could, I can bolt that piece to the floorboard there with, without having to bolt it all the way through. I am almost done with all that uh, steel from those two brackets. So I cut this piece out, left the uh, curve in there, the factory curve in there. And what's nice is on this last piece, I just have to remove the paint and cut it down. I also can leave the factory curve in there because I don't have anything that can bend 3 16 But I'll cut it here and I'll cut it here. And then that'll be the final piece to weld in and you get the idea from here to here and that will finish it out. The question really is can a Miller-Matic 135 actually weld 3 16 On paper no, but in reality yes it can. But you got to have it on the spinal tap setting. 
Well, I'm enjoying another 90 degree day and f fabbing up stuff, so here's the end result of those two brackets being welded together. I don't know if this is beautiful or insanely ugly. I mean, I don't know, but this is what I came up with. I'm going to go ahead and uh, paint that up and go ahead and install it and see how it works. All right, well, here's where we're at. On the top side here, I've ground down the paint and I've drilled a couple holes in there. And that will be for the bolts that are going to mount the bracket. The other thing you'll notice is I found this nice little uh, metal plug here to plug the original hole up. This is actually a three-quarter inch plug from an electrical, that's for an electrical box. But it's nickel-plated, galvanized metal. Now on the underside, you can see here's where my plug is. I'm going to seam seal all that. Sorry for the shaky camera work here, I'm on my back. Then you'll notice here, this is actually a plate of 16 gauge metal that I've just kind of spot welded in just to hold it up there. And that'll provide a little more support for the, you know, for the pedal bracket. And so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to seam seal the plug and I'm going to seam seal this with that Pour 15 epoxy patch. And then I'm going to just shoot it with a little bit of paint. Well, there is the bracket installed. I touched up the Pour 15 all under, up underneath it and let that dry. Well, here's the finished product with the pedal mounted and it's in the right position. There's a little bit of flex to it, so I may tighten it up a little bit. It looks like I can floor it and then you get the full throw. It's comfortable. I think it's in exactly the right position it needs to be, so. I'm happy with that, so I'm going to go ahead and take the pedal off, leave the bracket in. Everything in the interior is going to get primed and, and painted, and so that bracket will just get painted with the rest of the interior. So that's it. So thanks for watching.